Bell. Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romaine Bostic alongside Taylor Riggs counting you down to the closing bell and here to help take us beyond the bell, our global simulcast team. Joined right now by Tim Stenovic bringing together our Bloomberg television, radio, and YouTube audiences to parse through all the crucial moments of the day. Moments so crucial, Tim, that both Carol and Caroline decided <laughs> to take the day off. Yeah. Hey, nobody can predict the future, though, right? <laughs> That's the thing. Look, going into today, uh, stocks were set to have the worst week in months. Inflation, of course course, was the concern, but that shift really seemed to shift. Toward the end of the week, guys, Thursday and Friday, investors really shrugging it off. Um, late day rallies on the S&P 500 uh, on the Dow as well, uh, sending stocks higher, broad-based rally. And it really was some of that economic data, Tim, of course, that you highlighted. We had CPI remain. We had PPI. Yeah. You had jobless claims. You had the yeah. retail sales today. So really getting a full sort of breadth of the CPI sort of hit the market. Everyone kind of ignored PPI because we had the CPI numbers earlier. The jobless claims, okay. And then retail sales, you know, missing estimates. But, of yeah. course, sir, for their further providing uh, some relief here for the market. And it market. really was kind of a deluge here that we got with regards to the economic data. And then you think about it, we're going into a week where we're going to be pretty light on economic data. I think we get a couple of uh, housing numbers in there, but nothing too consequential here. So it'll be interesting to see what the market reaction, Tim, is next week when maybe you don't have catalysts pushing in either direction. Yeah, we're also going to hear from a lot of companies next week, like Home Depot, Walmart, for example, yeah. and we're going to get some insight mm -hmm. into how they're feeling about the economy. But I do think even though retail sales missed today, guys, um, just because they didn't change a month over month they're still at levels that we saw last month which were really high and last month's numbers were revised upward yeah absolutely you're hearing the closing bells uh, here in new york uh, let's break it down for you right now the s p 500 looks like it's going to finish the day higher by about one and a half percent four thousand one seventy three on the week it's lower by about one point four percent the nasdaq up three hundred points up two point three percent that's about what it's down for on the week about two point three percent the dow jones industrial average stop me if this gets repetitive up about one percent on the day <laughs> down about one percent on the week similar story with the russell two thousand the russell two thousand finishing the day higher by about 2.5 percent on the week down about two percent you never get repetitive romaine we love it even with all those superlatives that you bring us on such a volatile week like today let me draw you back and do exactly the action that we saw today on a sector level i love this everything is green for our radio audience we're looking at the best performers on a sector level and the worst performer and nothing is in the red right that just shows sort of this broad-based rally that we've continued to see it is semiconductors it is auto companies finally getting a big win i know of course we'll talk about tesla later Energy, of course, a big rebounder today, despite some of the negative news remain that we got about Marathon uh, Petroleum and the frustration over that merger. Finally, we take us all the way down to the bottom for the radio audience. The worst performers, they're still up three tenths of a percent. It's utilities, it's pharma, it's food and beverage and tobacco remain. Yeah, yeah, some breathtaking moves higher on the day. Up start up 20%, DoorDash up 20%. You missed Tesla there, up 3% on the day. Nevertheless, down 12% on the week. Worst week for Tesla that we've seen. Uh, going back uh, to at least February, I believe. You keep an eye here on Seagate. That's actually higher here on a Morgan Stanley note that talked about the tailwind it may be getting from cryptocurrency mining, Western digital also higher on the day and in the chip sector keep an eye on that remember we have another chip summit coming up on thursday at the white house to address that global chip shortage and the president of south korea is supposed to meet with biden at the white house on that friday macy as you just mentioned it a little bit earlier there tim going to get a lot of retail earnings next week yeah and remain you had the easy job today looking at the gainers in a, a day like today where there's green across the screen finding decliners and stories about those decliners relatively difficult still there are a few to talk about disney the big story of mm -hmm. course we covered it yesterday Yesterday, we covered it throughout the day today. Uh, the company finishing the day down around 2.5%, of course, adding fewer Disney Plus streaming customers than expected last quarter. Uh, Fox Corporation, you know, I think falling in sympathy with Disney, falling nearly 4% today. Plantronics, the headset maker, this one, guys, plunging uh, just around 20%. We, those, we do. That's you know, I was talking you. about this earlier in the day, <laughs> and one of my colleagues upstairs said, are you just talking about this because you spend all day wearing a Plantronics headset, speaking to people virtually? And I said, no, you know, the company He's down 20% today. And look, it's a chip story also. Yes. It's a chip story yeah. also. Uh, finally, Biogen, uh, down just fractionally. Recovered late in the day, but this morning, the company said that a study for X-linked retinitis pigmentosa did not meet its primary endpoint. You know, Tim, it's not, it's not unchecked.
on the day. It's all yields. It's all that we're going to do. I'm <laughs> you stealing have all the, the fun, thunder. Taylor. No one cares about your decliners, Tim. <laughs> Let's talk about yields. This is great. On the week, you're actually up on the week. And Tim, this really sort of highlights where we were with some of the CPI data, the PPI data that we got this week, where you had a big up in yield down in bond price Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We've caught a little bit of a bid Thursday, Friday, but you're still at five, six, seven basis points on the long end. You also had 10 and 30 year bond auctions this week. Yeah. 10 was strong, 30 was soft. You wonder though, I mean, why didn't you see a little bit more of a reaction in the bond market? Real yields actually slipped a little bit more. You're mm -hmm. down to 91 basis points in the hole today, despite this inflation readings that we're getting out of the CPI, PPI, and of course the fact that you still have commodity prices, although they pulled back a little bit today, still camped out around some of those multi-year highs. Yeah, tra transitory or not transitory is the question when it comes to inflation. If there's one word that really sums up the stock market this week, the equity market this week, it's inflation. Those CPI numbers that we got certainly spooked equity investors, uh, but I think there was something that shifted later in the week that said, wait a second, this could be more transitory, or there is this other camp too that includes former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, who continues to say that, that inflation, in his opinion, uh, could get out of control, Taylor. And we heard about that in the University of Michigan. I just want to read a quote that we got from that about perhaps maybe some of the early indications of how it's starting to weigh on the consumer. Consumer confidence in early May remained tumbling due to higher inflation. Rising inflation means that real income expectations mm -hmm. were the weakest in five years. They're yeah. saying that buying conditions for homes, vehicles, household durables were now more negative than in any time since the last inflationary period and back we, in 1980. And we should point out there's a disconnect here, but I think between the way the market and I guess more wealthier individuals are looking at inflation right now and other folks out there who maybe are feeling this uh, a lot more directly here, whether it's the higher costs that you're paying over at the grocery store, uh, at the gas pump, and in other places here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that sort of affects consumer sentiment uh, in the longer term, Tim. You know, Carl Riccadonna, Peter Coy, folks we talk to each and every day on Bloomberg Business Radio, and I know you guys talk to him on, 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 Bloomberg, Business, on, on Bloomberg TV as well. They say to keep an eye on wage inflation, and yeah. that really got me thinking this week when we got the news from McDonald's that at least yeah. in its uh, corporate-owned stores, it's going to raise wages uh, there, approaching $13 an hour, not quite $15 an hour. Hour. And then in addition to that, the news from Amazon, yeah. a, a company that a couple years ago said we are going $15 an hour to attract workers across the across the way, uh, going up to $17 an hour with some new positions on average that they're hiring. Right. You don't uh, need wage inflation yeah. if you all bought Bitcoin at five <laughs> cents and now it's back up to 50,000. Blink and you missed it. Yeah. We dipped below. Yeah. What were we, Romaine? 47, 48 earlier this week. We're back yeah, above we 50. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ethereum's up. Dogecoin yeah. was up. I mean, uh, talk about volatility. Yeah, I mean, we got to talk about the Doge here. I mean, a lot of people sort of the make Doge. fun of it, but I mean, look, <laughs> the, the general idea here, the outperformance that we've seen in that, the fact that Elon Musk, of course, is now trying to, I don't know, well, I don't know what he's trying to do, but but now that he's tweeting about it, let's just sit, leave it at that. But the general idea here that you're seeing a lot of these secondary crypto coins now sort of start to take a little bit more of the shine away from Bitcoin, I guess, you know, maybe it's speculation, maybe it's will. You take a look at the board look here, the you run CRYP on the Bloomberg terminal. We don't have the Doge on the system, by the way. Not yet. So, yeah, so apparently a lot of uh, very serious people but, at Bloomberg have decided we should not have the Doge on there. But you see Ethereum <laughs> Classic there outperforming on the day of 24, 24%. And that's actually been the story now for the last couple weeks, guys. Ethereum has actually been the outperformer. Mm -hmm. Similar story with Litecoin and Monero. Doge, where's the Doge? Well, Coinbase says the Doge is coming in six to eight weeks, and that's because six customers, to eight weeks. Really, customers <laughs> wanted it on the platform. I know, I'm thinking to myself, what takes so long? <laughs> by, by then, there will be many more coins that we're going to be talking the about. The Doge will be at like 50 <laughs> bucks by then. I missed Maybe. Your entry point. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, you My know, favorite we... comment has to be from Jason yeah. Brady of Thornburg, who just said he hopes yeah. Jay Powell is more committed to interest rates than Musk is to Bitcoin. All right, we should end on a high note here, and we got to talk about what? this. This is very New York-centric here. Yeah. But New York City, I think it's on Wednesday, Wednesday is now going back to 100% capacity in most businesses. There's some exceptions here and there, but generally restaurants, theaters, things like that can now, if they want to, have 100% capacity back in there. I, I guess that's a good thing. It is a good thing. The question is whether consumers are going to feel comfortable actually going. One of my favorite features of the Bloomberg Terminal is checking out turnstile entries. We have the data from the MTA, and it shows a chart. I don't know if we're going to pull it up right now. They it's are. On the screen. It's up. There Wait, it is. Can you miss it? Yeah. Look yeah. at how much. You're not getting 100% capacity on the subway. We are trust so me. far from 100%. 
other so day. far from where we were 16 <laughs> months ago. So people are not riding the subway right now. No. How long is it going to take to get up to 6 million <laughs> riders a day? What it's, we saw in March of last year. It's a great read within the Bloomberg Business Week. I urge all of our readers to check it out. It's on newsstands everywhere, Romaine. Do you know what a newsstand is? <laughs> newsstand? I think I saw one of those once. It is on newsstands everywhere. And it's on the Bloomberg yeah. terminal everywhere. It's on the dot com. Uh, Tim, really is that, fascinating. Is that where they take everything out on the internet and print it on, the, on paper? <laughs> and print it on, with glossy okay. pictures. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a it's New a York centric concept. story, but a good barometer, of course, yeah. of how the financial industry gets back to work. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for our cross platform coverage of the market close on Bloomberg Television, Radio, and YouTube. We are going to be back Monday at the same time, same place. Taylor, Romaine, have a great weekend.